Here we go, and we're live. Ah. So, hello to everybody who's watching either now or on catch up. Um, this is a completely different genre of discussion we're going to have. I think it's 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 more as James has probably agree with me. It's more going to be a kind of like music. Well, it's about music. If you're watching this, it's yeah. about music. It's not about movies. Uh, maybe soundtracks might come into it later on. We never know, you know. Um, but as it stands at the moment, James and I are just going to have a frank discussion about his musical taste, my musical taste, and basically see where it ends up because both of us are kind of live stream music virgins to this. Mm -hmm. We've watched some movie live streams, um, but we haven't done a music one. So... Yes, so there we go. So, um, Adam's here anyway. Oh, hello, Adam. Hi, Adam. Yes, Adam. I tell you what, though, I feel a bit guilty because I didn't realize that Play Tender Guy Pete was going to be doing a live stream on Wednesday as well. It was Probably. purely down to when I messaged you. I didn't know any of that kind of stuff. I thought, yeah. you know what? I'll uh, I'll do it. The kids aren't here tonight. The wife's got mm. her friends around. So mm -hmm. we'll do it. It's my mum's birthday today. Not that she's watching, but happy birthday, mum. I've already told you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Mother Magpie. And I was going to change my title, I think, tonight as well to mm. uh, Music Magpie, but I thought, well, I can't because that's kind of copyrighted. So, yeah, you could have Music Bug, you're fine with that. Yeah, yeah that's fine with me. I like it. <laughs> but I couldn't do Music Magpie because yeah. I get a copyright lawsuit coming in and people will think I'll be selling yeah. CDs, Blu rays, two for a fiver on, on yeah. films and all that, which, which I'm clearly not. <laughs> I know, exactly. That's why. I, you know, because obviously when when everyone's out and about and they do their shopping mm. bids, they're very much so. Oh, it's Magpie movies, movies, Magpie, you know, and all that kind of thing. So, yes, we are putting that in a box and putting mm -hmm. it to one side. So it's still Magpie movie, it's still movie bug, but mm -hmm. on tonight, it's all about the music. Yeah. Um, so, um, Clark, all the way from uh, Australia, I believe Clark's oh, here. Hello, Clark. I, I think I could be wrong. Yeah. Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, so yes, yeah, so for those who don't know, uh. I am 43. Yes, I know I look about the same age as James, but I'm not. I have aged like a fine wine. Um, you're 25? 24, nearly. nearly. 24, 24. Okay, fair yeah. enough. So there's, there's your music, well, my taste in music basically began probably within the decade you were born. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah. so yeah <laughs> so yeah so so when i was growing up <clears throat> the 90s was the one for me now i know we discussed yeah. this previously that you're very much uh like me beatles mm -hmm. 60s but then you more kind of like go towards the 70s i'm guessing like bowie and that kind of thing that'd be right yeah. mm -hmm. that's right yeah so, so not kind of glam rock but more rock from the 70s would that be right yeah, I, I my my I think my favorite my sweet spot of music is probably the late sixties to the late seventies. But then I love to dip my toes sort of in every decade of music. But that would be my sweet spot. I mean, from 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 because we're going to start with this. So musical influences. Um, I'll, I'll just hang on. I've got a few. Um, I've got on oh, here. Fun how you both slagged each other off and now doing a live stream together. I've never slagged James off, Matt. <laughs> no idea. So, so that one, uh, Mattia. By the way, I'm looking down because the, it's on the laptop. Oh. Um, that's a Merry Christmas. Oh, cheers, Matt. Thank you very much for that kind words. Uh, even Carl's here. We'll, we'll watch tomorrow oh. at breakfast. Oh. Thanks, buddy. Uh, hello, boys. Uh, so Very here we go. Straight in here. This is what I like. Have you both watched the Beatles documentary in Disney? Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's how we, the whole thing between you and I doing this live stream about music, that yeah. was the catalyst, I think, to be honest, do you think? Well, yeah, i definitely say so, because to be honest, it was one of those things, it was weird, I, I because because of COVID and stuff, that documentary kept getting um, pushed back, and I sort of forgot it was coming out, and it sort of come out out of nowhere, and my <laughs> my love for just listening to people just completely, cut. I mean, I've always listened to them, I've got like five of their songs still on my playlist, but all of a sudden I'm listening to nothing but Beatles again because of that documentary. And I'm just talking about them so much again. Yeah, totally. It was like, cause I didn't know how long the documentary was. So I was very much a case of got to, anything to do with the Beatles or John Lennon documentary wise, mm -hmm. I have to watch. Mm -hmm. It's just an obsession I've had. I think, but when you're right, it's, it's like, um, 
I know quickly touch on it, but mm-hmm. um, I'm trying to think of what it was. It's like uh, Spider Man <clears throat> at the minute it's at the cinema. Yeah. And all of a sudden, everyone's going back to rediscover the Sam Raimi trilogy yeah. and then the Andrew Garfield too. It's a bit like with, with music as well. Like I was mm-hmm. saying to you before, we I used to listen to music a lot. Mm-hmm. Especially the uh, Beatles uh, and uh, '90s Britpop, and then it kind of. Di- I used to listen to it all the time. I mean, I used to be listening to it nonstop, constant when I was walking to and from work or to and from college. It was on mm-hmm. constantly, but then I kind of, kind of drifted away. And then that's when the movies mm-hmm. things came in. Because mm-hmm. instead of sitting down, listening, to- I sometimes used to, on the ages ago, I used to sit down when I was living at home. Yeah, uh, I living at home. Sorry, living with my parents, and I would just put the. the um, the music on the background and just chillax and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but but then you're right, the Beatles kind of came back and it kind of goes, kind of, it was like something went off and I'm just like, right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I went, all my CDs are in, because I've got here, I've got the um, mm-hmm. iPod here, which has got Beatles mm-hmm. stuff on, but I want to listen more John Lennon, so I want the garage, I've got a tub, I dug out all my CDs and when mm-hmm. I've been working here, because this is where mm-hmm. I'm working, I just have it on the background and it's just yeah. getting that, it's back into it. And you're right. So with regards to Adam saying there, the Beast documentary, yeah, as soon as you watch it, because Jim, they've never spoken really about music before, but we both, I think, although you maybe not know with me, I know with you that... Oh. Uh, broken oh, up back. in my end. Are you there? Oh, you still there? There yeah, we are. Yeah. I'm not sure what that was. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so it's, it's kind of like, um, I've lost a train of thought. Um, but yes, with the Beatles documentary come on, I knew that. So I messaged you, and yeah. then that's how mm-hmm. it kind of like emerged into what it is now, which is yeah. this this mm-hmm. chat. Um, so yes, so to answer the question, Adam. Yes, we've both watched it, and it's very, yeah. very, it's a very good. <laughs> as soon as it comes out to buy, I'm hoping it does. Yeah. If not, I'll be like uh, Gary Blu-ray collector. Can you send me? The, you know. So <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna lie. I've actually watched the third part of it twice just to get that. Okay. Room. I, I, the rooftop concert blew my mind in that documentary. See, because I never knew mm. from watching it that they were going to do a live show. I yeah. thought it was just a case they did it just to get publicity. Mm. That's why. Right. I mean, Obviously, I don't know that much. No, I didn't know either that like the police eventually got up there and they were trying to unplug their amps and stuff. So not only just to find that stuff out, but to actually watch it was incredible. Yeah. I thought it was like watching a movie. Yeah, and it, it's so. I love the fact it's more like a fly on the wall. Obviously, it's a bit like um, when uh, Peter Jackson did the uh, They Shall Not Grow Old, and you could tell that some of it's been dubbed onto it, like the voices, mm-hmm. because obviously they can't match it, and you could tell sometimes it's on there. But it, it's just a, such a super, superb yeah. documentary. I I didn't care. It was nine hours. Well, I no, just loved it. And I think that's one of the things I loved about it. I was kind of expecting a documentary, and like, I've seen, like, probably yourself, so many documentaries on the Beatles, and I think the anthology, which you see just above you there, that that's kind of the the ultimate one, isn't it? So it was just nice that it, was, it wasn't it was a documentary, actually. I liked the fly-on-the-wall aspect to it. I thought it was just different, unique, and, yeah. Just I mean, really- going go to this, as we discussed a while ago, mm. this needs a, a blu-ray restoration because i put it on to start watching the day and it's in the um 16 by 9 format yeah. mm-hmm. um so it's they'll, it needs they'll, a blu-ray. they'll do a blu-ray but they'll do it for an anniversary i reckon i reckon i, I mean how old is that now when was that 90 90 that was 90s i'm not too sure really what years on the bottom mid 90s i think but i'm guessing for like maybe 2025 the 30th it says here, it says here 2003, but I think it couldn't have been. Well, it might have been. I'm guessing maybe that's when they released it physically, but I know it aired in the 90s, so I'm guessing maybe when it's the 30th anniversary or something, they'll do a Blu ray. Yeah. Hope so. I mean, I remember watching that on ITV. It was on a Sunday night mm. between 8 and 9 or 9 or 10, I think, on a Sunday night on ITV that year. So, you know, you would have probably been about 10. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. <laughs> that came on. So, I, yes. Yeah. It, it, it's it is such a good thing as well, and the fact it was George Harrison's in it as well. Obviously, we both That's, know that John Lennon can't obviously be in that one, yeah. but to have, to have that in there. I just love watching the bits where it's just Paul, Ringo, and George, like you know, in the nineties and stuff, and they're just mucking about in their ukuleles and stuff. Those sort of bits to it, just just so fascinating to watch. I think I, I I've got the singles as well of uh, Free as a Bird and Real Love mm. as well, but it's yeah. it's funny with the Free as a Bird one because it is. 
you listen to it and it is a John Lennon solo it's track. Almost haunting to listen to, I think, because obviously he's, you know, died and stuff. It's it's a very interesting song. Yeah, it's ex exactly. And it's it's weird, but what I'm trying to say is like it's weird how it got released as a Beatles song. But yeah. You can tell it's not a Beatles song, it's a yeah. Lennon yeah. full stop. And all they've basically done for to make the Beatles because they're gonna do something is just get all these re all recordings. We'll do one of his. We'll you yeah. can tell Ringo's drums as well because it's just this mm -hmm. Yeah, like, the, the Ringo has that sound. Um, but yes, go on, I think like Harrison's say? voice was still good on it as well. You could tell Paul had aged up a little bit on the track, I think, though. <laughs> yeah, but you could tell it was an old th uh, eight track, whatever track recorded yeah. for Lennon's voice. Mm. You know, I mean, if they did it now, it probably sound a lot better. To be mm. honest, if they did it now, they'd probably get a holograph, holograph on stage, probably. like you know, like Abra probably do. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, <laughs> like what Abra are gonna do, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Jamie's here, um, so he's. Oh. Oh. I would do, but hang on. Yeah, my uh, <laughs> laptop is knocking up. You can still see me, though, yeah? I can see you, yeah. You're all good on my end. Let me just... Oh, hang on. Let me just... There we are. Because for some reason, the... Um, oh, there we go. It's working now, is it? Is that working as well? There we go. Right, yeah. But it's the computer from the 90s as well. <laughs> no, this is the wife's works computer, so I don't oh, know why it's taking... There we go. Right, anyway, Jamie's there. So, hello, Jamie. Yes, I'm hello, good. Jamie. Thank you very much. And I'm sure that uh, my mate over here is very well as well. I even, just for tonight, I actually went and got a haircut. Not oh, really? obviously for Christmas as well, but I thought I've got to have one. Yeah. It was getting ridiculously long and it looked stupid. I was debating whether to do my Beatles mop top, but I, I, it looks it, uh, horrendous at the minute. <laughs> that, yeah. No, not, not, no, not no, style no. at all. I mean, I'll, true, true story. I used to have long hair. Let me mm. get, hang on, where, where are we going here? Get rid of that a second. I used to have long hair where it was like proper like oasis. So this came down to yeah. here mm -hmm. and I had it like long. I used, yeah. you know, whatever, I used to straighten it, you know, I used to get, uh, I and I always remember going, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was all, <laughs> to be fair, I had like a corduroy like, uh, cap mm -hmm. like uh, Oasis did for the Be Here Now mm -hmm. tour. And, and I'll be honest, I looked pretty good. I had like, you know, like an army jacket on. I had the corduroy top on. It was, Mm. And it looked, but yeah, but uh, I remember walking down the street in Newcastle to get my hair cut, and somebody went, "Get your hair cut, you hit me." And I thought, right, well, yeah, but it. Yeah, I used to do. I used to do mine at school, try and do it like a beetle, and um, obviously, completely out of my time zone with the hairstyle. And uh, my granddad just always used to say, "Oh, you, when you get your hair cut, you look like a girl." It's like, great, that's great. <laughs> I think it was also the fact that after I did it long, and then I got dumped, yeah. and I got through the stage. I was like. I'm not going to get another lass if I have any long hair. Yeah. So I decided to get it cut. And now I've had it cut. Obviously, I'm not mm. married, got two kids, except further down the line. It's a different yeah. girl, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, when I had my corona cut, when I buzzed it, she's like, don't cut. No, you're not doing that again. Right. I'm like, oh, I'm going to grow it. And she's like, no, you're not growing it. I'm just saying, like, right, fine. Book the middle of the road, then. That's yeah. where it is. <laughs> yeah, Ridiculous. It's, it's an interesting style that, you know, these, but like the Oasis cut and the Beatles mop top, it's... Um, yeah, it's it 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 suits them, but I'm not sure it worked it worked too well. You can tell it. you can tell mods who try to get the hair bit, but like Paul Weller, mm -hmm. and, and he can go yeah. all right, and he go if you're Paul Weller, you'd look good. Yeah, but you're not. No, that's so you it. Look a little bit weird. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. Um, what's this one here? Oh, sorry, Mister Most One. The was the movie. Did you watch the Billy Eilish documentary? It's good. I'll be honest with you. And answer answer Lewis's question is I'm not a fan of Billy Eilish. So mm -hmm. I have not watched a documentary, and I'll be honest, from a musical, um, what I like, mm -hmm. I'm not interested. So, but I don't know about you, James. I, I actually bought her first album, like the record. I've actually, I actually on the vinyl of it, um, because I'd I'd heard one of the songs. This was back when I used to buy loads of records, and I was just really curious because it sounded so different. And um, I'll give her credit for being creative and being different. It's not really my thing too much, but. I won't watch the documentary. <laughs> yeah. When she came out recently and said she she was watching porn from the age of eleven, and it yeah, affected her. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I I sort of with a lot of these modern pop stars, I'm not really into a lot of the chart ones. I I, I don't really follow them too much about what they say on the social media. I know some of them like to go a bit far with it. Yeah, I've got I've got one here. This is a hard question for you. I'll let you answer this one first. Okay, go on. Uh, there we go. What's the best gig you've been to? This one here. Right, this is where I got the shirt. This is um, from when I went to see McCartney live in 2015. Um, I mean, I've been to about seven artists now, I think. And I've been to see some more modern ones like Keen, um, Aurora. Um, who else have I been to? 
I can't even think at the minute. So I have been some more modern ones because I know Paul's getting on now, but it was just hearing those songs. Oh, I think you're about me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have yet to come and see you live. I will one day. Yeah. <laughs> this is the closest you're going to get, I'm yeah. afraid. And I'm definitely not getting my guitar out because it's, no. it is uh, it needs tuning. I haven't tuned it. Oh, uh, and I, it's another but, thing as well with my guitar. I used to, when I was at uni between 97 mm -hmm. and 2000, even when just a couple of years after, I used mm -hmm. to properly get into it and play it. Yeah. But it's, it is like riding a it's different than riding a bike because you never forget. But with that, it's it's hard because your fingers aren't hard as they are from the the steel strings yeah. anymore, and also your nails aren't as short, and it goes it goes all plingy. Uh, and I never get a chance to now. But yes, so if anybody's gonna ask, I'm not gonna play my guitar. To oh, well, so it goes to face go and my, my hands used to sting so much after playing that. <laughs> I know. I mean, I'm sure that my left hand is is still a bit thick on it. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I used to. Play like the Beatles do 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 the the day yeah. tripper riff. Mm -hmm. Got to do it yeah. now. It's plink 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 ping ping, yeah. and I'm just like right. I'm not even going to even remote. I used Funny to go with people that sit, play something. I'm like everything I could play was Oasis. That was it. Yeah. So I was like, I've got to learn something else. Mm -hmm. So I could do the opening bit of Take That Back for Good, and I could mm -hmm. do the Lars There She Goes riff. Yeah, and that was it. Yeah. So, See, mine was all all Beatles nearly. I, I knew a couple others like Mr. Blue Sky and stuff, but. Yeah, I, 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 every song I learned on the bass was more or less Beatles. I learned one song on piano. I, I used to know how to play Hey Jude, but if you sat me down at a piano now, I can tell you now I would not be able to do it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is. You've got to kind of, if you said to me, Paul, you're playing the guitar every day for two weeks for three hours a yeah. day, I'd probably be back to the kind of little bit of the standard that I used. Mm -hmm. I'm not an excellent guitarist. I'm even going to say that I am because I'll, I'll mm -hmm. be talking shit. Yeah, I can, I'm self-taught. I don't know. I don't read music. I can read mm -hmm. uh, tabs and chords, and that's it. Mm -hmm. But it's just it's funny trying to get like trying to teach somebody, and the fingers are trying to how do I stretch my finger to do like a chord? It's it's weird. Yeah, but yes, yeah. I need to get back into that. See, that's another thing since the Beatles thing, because like I said, that's Catalyst. Is mm. I've been sitting there and I'm like, because I know the first two chords of Don't Look Back in Anger or C and F, which mm -hmm. is kind of a rip from Imagine. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, it doesn't sound like Imagine. So I googled it. So you got to take one finger off to make it sound like Imagine. I was like, all oh, right. Yeah. So, and then I'm like, and there's another thing. I was like, I was, I was trying to, I was trying to remember how to play. Um, I forgot something, and I was just like, oh, whatever. And I was like, whatever. Mm -hmm. and I was like, got chord that, got, and I was, and I completely forgot. Was normally like, oh, I can do the whole song all the way through. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like when I was yeah. younger, I used to know like um, every single Oasis single, every mm -hmm. single B side which was on that single, and what yeah, yeah it came out. Mm -hmm. No idea now. It's all gone. Yeah. Useless knowledge yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the best gig you've been to, going back on track, I'm going to go off, is um, is the yeah. Macca one. Yeah. I mean, it was the first one he'd done in London in like six, seven years as well. And he brought out like Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters and stuff. And it was like, okay. he'd done a few songs he'd never, ever performed live before. Um, one of them was his, it was a new single at the time, Hope for the Future. Um, and he'd done one from his 1980 album, McCartney 2. He'd done Temporary Secretary. Right. right. It, like, he'd never done that song live before, and it's actually one of my favourites, so I was really excited <laughs> when he'd done that. But, I, yeah. I mean, we, I mean, we've just, we'll mean, we go into this in a minute um, with regards to Macca, etc. So, personally, the, the best gig I've ever been to, I think, was in, I'm going to say 2003, and I could be wrong here. Mm -hmm. Is when I went to see Lincoln Park at Manchester MEN Arena. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because at the time I was part of the Lincoln Park Underground, which was a fan club. I so I remember going. Yeah. Yeah. And I went, and um, me, my girlfriend, and her friend went. Mm -hmm. And I got to go backstage before the gig because I had me yeah. pass. And mm -hmm. I met all of the band apart from the guitarist because he was still doing sound check. Yeah. And then I came and then signed my album hybrid mm -hmm. theory and then i came out and i watched the gig and it was funny because when they do a live show they've got boxes so when they come up they could stand in the box and people mm -hmm. like and i was just like why well, has nobody ever thought of that before yeah but you yeah. know there was like there was no uh lost profit supported now i know mm -hmm. obviously what happened with the lead string of that but at that mm -hmm. time we didn't know that, and i really like the lost profits and there was another band the three piece i can't remember who they were and then Linkin park mm -hmm. which to me because I was like, I need to see Linkin Park. I'm not going to come to Newcastle. I need to go to Manchester. So I went to Manchester. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, my other favourite gig is probably when I went to see Oasis in 2005, I think, at the okay. City of Manchester Stadium, which is the one, if you've got the Lord Don't Slow Me Down box set documentary thing, yes, the gig yeah. that's on there that was on Channel 4, 
because I always remember it because the um, was, when Oasis came on, there was a massive surge and the barriers broke at the front. Yeah. And like, um, so, this, so, so the Oasis stopped playing and everyone had to back up and everything. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember Noel standing over going, you're getting fired, you're getting fired, you're going fired. <laughs> and, then, and then the camera was going around everybody, only all these girls with people's shoulders. Yeah, um, and they were getting their boobs out, and I always yeah. remember Liam going, "There's plenty of tits, but no breasts," and I thought yeah. that was great. But that gig was the one that was broadcast on Channel Four, and that's on that, and I was on that. Mm. I wasn't on it, but I was there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then ten days later, the same tour was at Newcastle Arena, so I went to see that as well. And yeah. I always remember that because there was no aircon in there, and I had my mate on my shoulder. And he says, yeah. "I'm sweating." I'm not surprised, and he told me that he had no underwear on. I'm like, "Well, you're going to be really sweating, and you're on my shoulders." So th- those, I think. Purely because I'd seen Oasis twice in ten days, and seen yeah. Lincoln Park because mm-hmm. I really wanted to mm-hmm. on my um, on my favorite gigs. So there you go. So that's that's my picks. Uh, what Adam's got here? Uh, come on. <laughs> Why is it? Is... Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go. Is on on your end. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, oh that one. Mm. Here we go. What's your favorite Beatles album? Oh. I mean, I don't know. Can you really choose one? <laughs> you, you, you're going to do an Alan Partridge? Oh, I don't know. No, I, 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 I got to. I can. I can't choose between Abbey Road and the White Album for me. It's between those two, without a doubt. I think for me, it's probably the debut album, "Please Please Me," mm-hmm. and "Hard Day's Night." Nice about that one is that it's just all more or less live. That's the great thing about "Please Please Me." And I love it's got twist and shout on it, and it's got um, money, and I love their rendition of money. Oh, money's actually on the second one. Is it? Yeah. No, I see it. Oh, that's on. The, oh, well, actually, mm, I'm trying. Hang to... on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me check. I'm right. I know I'm right. <laughs> You're probably going to be right, James. I'm right. I know I'm right. <laughs> I have it here. I told, I told you, I got them all out of the car, out of the garage even. So please, please me. Uh, mm. No, you are correct. Yeah, I, I, I honestly, like when I got into music when I was, must have been about 12, for a solid year, the beat was all I listened to. I know these albums like the back of my hand almost. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Number 14 is obviously the, I don't know if you can say it, mm. Twist and Shout, which yeah. is another one I love. I, I think I just, I mean, a lot of these obviously are covers. In here, yeah. Well, mm-hmm. no, they're not actually. How many are? Well, I mean, I I'm not going to go into that. First two albums is that you know they were still just getting started, so you know there's a lot of covers on them because I think a hard day's night's the first one where there wasn't a cover on it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So yeah, so those are my two mm-hmm. favorite Beatles albums. I'd, yeah. Like I said, they were just a hand because I got them out of the garage because I'd be listening to them. Yeah. Um, but I, mean, I, also, I think money's on the anthology as well. I think. Yeah. Yeah. They do a few. They might do two versions of it on there. They might do a live one. I can't. I'm not as familiar with the anthology to be honest. I don't play them as much. But when I was collecting a lot, like when I used to collect music a lot, because I've actually pulled a little stack out here. Of like, I used to buy so many copies of each album, like different ones. And I think that's another thing which is cool about the Beatles is like how collectible their stuff is. Oh yeah, my dad still got the Sergeant. I'm gonna. I have had. I don't like again since. Mm. You know, I I actually. Um, don't like that get back documentary because it's going to be expensive for me i believe mm-hmm. because i've already bought two john lennon dvds i've bought a yeah. john lennon book recently which there was um there was a film called chapter 27 i think which was about oh, mark yeah. david Ch- mm-hmm. yeah and that was based on a book of the final days of john lennon mm-hmm. and i bought that off um World of Books for three ninety nine. So I'm gonna right. read that. Um, yeah. But yes, going back to that, it's like the fact that I've got all those out, and yeah. I've, I've ordered. I bought this one, which which I showed you, and you said it's very good. Yes, it's I also got. Good. Mm-hmm. Give me some truth on it. I haven't seen that. And then I bought mm-hmm. the John Lennon that one, and I bought another John Lennon yep. one. Um, you, I bought the original I, margin. Yeah. It's just, I'm quite lucky. I just instantly went to the Let It Be vinyl box set that's just come out. It's like a hundred and twenty quid. But um, my mum said she'll she'll give me some money towards it for Christmas, and I'm, I know I'm getting it Christmas Day, so I'm quite lucky. I'll be getting that. But I have been looking at loads more Beatles stuff lately. Um, but to be honest, 
with the Beatles, I, I kind of have nearly everything I want. Like, I've bought all their albums, even solo careers. And some of them were really hard to get. Like McCartney has some stuff solo, like from when records weren't being pressed. Really right, okay. Hard. So they, they took, he took me a while to get all of his stuff. Um, the Beatles, I, I more or less have it, you know, nearly everything. <laughs> well, in that case, I'm very jealous because with, again, going back to Get Back, I've thought, you know what, well, this one thing that this house doesn't have mm -hmm. is a vinyl player. I don't have a record player. Mm -hmm. And I think purely for, if I'm honest, the John Lennon solo stuff, I want to hear that through a record player as opposed yeah. to through um, a CD. Because well, I think it, that's how it's intended to be listened to, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's why I want to do that. Well, I, funny enough, I think it was last year they brought out a compilation on Lennon called Give Me Some Truth. Yes. And they'd remastered it, and it is some of the best remastering I've ever heard. Like, it sounds so much clearer. I highly recommend it. It's on Spotify, um, but it's just so amazing. But um, I, I really don't think that you can um, beat playing a record. Because I'll, I'll show you here what I pulled out, like, just for an example of, like, how I used to collect stuff. I pulled out, like, the White Album and, like, so this is like my original mono. Like, I mean, I know it's not much to look at, but <laughs> it's... Well, so why I've, is it called the White Album? Well, I, 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 I <laughs> wonder why. <laughs> Who but, knew? So I got, I've got a mono, and this is an original stereo, which looks exactly the same, from 68. And then I have an original French pressing. And then I've got an American pressing with a stain on. So what's the differences we, then? Because you'll know about this. If I were to buy something, what's the difference between mono and stereo? Obviously, stereo is going to come out two speakers with different sounds, obviously, but mono yeah. would be all at once. And there was, well, they, they what they used to do is they used to do two mixes of each album. And I'm not going to lie, I'm never, I was never a fan of the way the Beatles used to mix their stereo stuff. It's one of the few things I never liked because they would just have like just vocals come out of one speaker. So say you've got a dodgy pair of headphones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the, one thing I used to listen to when I listened to the Red Album or whatever when I was yeah. on the way. I'd be like this, I'm like, yeah. and then this one would be like, oh, oh. Like, all right, okay, yeah. That's, they're, they're, they're mixing on stereo. And uh, to be honest, there are little things that you can hear in the mono mixes, especially on like the weirder albums like Sgt. Pepper, which you will not hear um, on the stereo cuts. So I always prefer listening to them in mono. But the last one I have to show for the White Album is because of the 50th anniversaries. Um, George Martin's son's been doing new mixes on them. And oh, nice. this is like the, the vinyl set you can get for the White Album. And his mixes are incredible. They're so good. Like, it just really brings out, like, with the guitar solos and stuff, they sound a lot more fresh. And, like, the drums sound a lot more clear on some tracks. And it's just the way to listen to them now, in my opinion. So you make me jealous now. You make me like, wanting to go out tomorrow and buy this massive fuck-off vinyl player with money yes. that I don't have. <laughs> Sneak it into the house, putting it under the TV on the stand. Yeah. And putting it on, and the wife going, what, where, where'd you get that from? Well, you know that money that we didn't put aside because we can't afford anything because we've got no money there yet. Well, that money, mm. what money is that? Exactly. So, yeah. So, <laughs> I, yeah. So, yeah. But I'm only, only going to get, like, if I do get a record player, I'm only going to get, like, Give Me Some Truth. Yeah. Um, And I want to get um Imagine. Mm -hmm. And then I, and I want to get just slowly build up the Beatles collection. Just what I'm yeah. not bothered about multiple I just want one. Yeah, I would like, yeah. sorry, would like one of each. Um but I didn't really this is how this is how so out of touch I am. You can mm -hmm. go on the HMV or online and a CD will cost you between 10 to 15 pounds. Yeah. Depending on like this Oasis one here because it's 18 quid because it's got a DVD included in it and whatever. Mm -hmm. And I thought oh vinyls won't be that much. I was like, 45 quid it was for Give Me Some Truth. And I know you yeah. paid over 100 quid for the uh, well, joint yeah. for Christmas. And I was just like, what? These things are older than I am, and they're more expensive. You don't go out and go, well, you know what? I'm going to buy a VHS today. And they go, well, that's 600 pounds. You know, it, I expected it would be different. Lower. Yeah, I, I think the, the thing with vinyl is, I don't know if it's to do with importing or something, because I know that like no vinyl is made here anymore. It's mostly all pressed in Germany now. Um, a lot of it's pressed in America as well, I think, because in America, vinyl is so much cheaper. And it, I don't know why here in the UK, it's just really expensive. But it's annoying because if you want to get a new album, like, um, for example, I've got I've still got this sitting on the floor here. I've got Robert Plant's new album um, with Alison Krauss um, from Led Zepp, um, Robert Plant from Led Zepp. And that cost me 30 quid, brand new album. 
How, how much? 30 quid. Oh. It's a brand new album. I'm just looking down at the bottom, just getting rid of any uh, spammy, spammy whammies. Oh, okay. uh, but, there's, but there's no. Okay, yes. But yeah, it's just... It, it's it's crazy. expensive hobby. Yeah, I, I think I've bought, like, in terms of new albums, I think I've bought, like, 12 this year, and they'll all be £25 more. Like, I've got an Eric Clapton live album on pre-order that comes out in January. I think it's three LPs, and it's 35 to 40 quid. Yeah. So. Ridiculous. And here's me grumbling about paying 25 quid for a 4K, but I could get an album that's going to cost 15 to 16 quid extra. I, that's, I, I, I will be honest, I only tend to buy like albums I really want now on vinyl. I mean, when you're buying old albums, it's different. You can go on eBay and find, like, especially like the popular ones, like, I don't know, like a Billy Joel or an Abba album for like two, three quid. So if yes. you buy like old ones, it's just new, new pressings. I think it's to do with importing. I'm not 100% sure. Because I looked on eBay about them, and I don't know whether it's because of the Get Back documentary that the Beatles ones are going up, because yeah. it's it's in. Because yeah. it's the same if you go to CEX. Resident Evil, for example, could be like five quid, but if a new movie comes up, they're bunking up to a tenner or something yeah. like that. So yeah. I'm guessing that could be the same. Um, but Jules is here. Sorry, Jules, we've got teams. Uh, have you for Paul Oldfall? Thank you very much. I don't know what that was about, but uh, thanks, Jules, for that. Um, Adams again, what's your favourite Oasis album? Mm. I'll let you go. But I, I think, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, Put this out there before you answer this. Mm -hmm. I'd like to think, although we both like Beatles and we mm -hmm. both probably all like Oasis, but I'd like to think, and this is not bragging. No, mm -hmm. I'm a bigger, bigger Oasis fan than you are. Oh yeah, yeah, but, definitely. yeah. <laughs> but so I will let you go ahead with answering this question. But you're not allowed to say "Morning Glory" because everybody goes to that fucking answer. Oh well, it's got to be the first album then, hasn't it? It's definitely got to be. Definitely, maybe. Got definitely got to be, definitely maybe. Definitely now, mine's, be. Con mine's controversial with regards to what my favourite Oasis yeah. album is. There's one um, I really like, actually. I, I, I forget the name of it. It's the one with the importance of being idle on. I think that's one that I really like. Don't Believe the Truth. Don't Believe the Truth, that's the one. Is it that one? That's on there because it's got Lila on it as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So my favourite one is I Always Remember... Mm -hmm. Because there was a BBC documentary about it. I remember I was working a summer job mm -hmm. and I went to my lunchtime to Asda in, I can't remember, somewhere in, in, next to Newcastle to get it. Mm -hmm. And it was getting really selling out and that's Be Here Now. I love okay. mm -hmm. Be Here Now because I I think it was it's because after Definitely, maybe, and then What's a the Story? Yeah. Be Here Now came out. And I think it was just when Oasis were at their peak. Now, unfortunately, mm -hmm. they went downhill after that. I'm not going to lie, I'm a massive Oasis fan. But Be Here Now for me was the peak yeah. mm -hmm. of the band as they were before people left and Noel changed the lineup or whatever. But when they released, which is one of my favourite songs, which is um, Do You Know What I Mean? I love Do You Know What I Mean? <laughs> yeah, it's Even good... though it's exactly the same chords as Wonderwall, mm -hmm. it's, I, I really like that song. And that came out and they had Angel Child on the um, B side. Um, mm -hmm. And they had another one. I forgot what it was. I see this in my memory's gone. But yeah, so Be Here Now, Ocean mm -hmm. Number 997. And then it was the second time I went to see them live because mm -hmm. of that tour. And Travis supported. And nobody had heard of Travis at that time. Yeah, Travis. I, I, yeah. I had because I'd got the debut album. Mm -hmm. I was like, ooh, get off Travis. But then, mm -hmm. of course, Travis then released their second album, was writing to reach you. And I was like, oh, I love Travis. I'm like, yeah. oh, that's their first album. That's not the first album. The first album is Good Feeling. It's a yeah. much better album. <laughs> so, yeah. so I was stood up the stands and Travis had finished and they left. And then they had yeah. the big curtain they had this little kind of chinese guy come out it was almost like odd job and he mm -hmm. dropped the curtain and he opened the the they had like a phone box that they all came out of and, and mm -hmm. i looked like that and, and uh, fran healy from travis was standing next to me mm -hmm. and so so but yeah so that album means a lot to me i still got the tour guide, yeah. the tour guide mm -hmm. to a program from it mm -hmm. um but yeah so that was my favorite way to sell them yeah, Which is, yeah. But, it's, oh, it's, i'm gonna go hang on hang on, hang on. Mm -hmm. mr movie bug is handsome man but mr lee yields is better sexy Oh, fair enough. I can't. <laughs> That's fine. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. So, what were you going to say? Obviously, I mentioned about be here now and that. Yeah. I mean, I, I Oasis. I love their first three albums, and then the rest are all kind of a bit mixed for me. But yeah, I mean, I don't believe the truth one that always stood out to me, and I really don't mind their last album either. Um, Dig out your soul. That's it. That's it. Yeah. The opening songs bag it up, isn't it? I think so. Like Written by Andy Bell. Oh, is it? Oh, I actually didn't know that. I because that's always actually been one of my favourite Oasis songs, and it's weird that it comes from like their last album, 
right before the breakup and stuff. But um, yeah, no, they're, they're, I, I just think their first three albums are just like on another level, though. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm the first one. I mean, I'm a Diehard Oasis fan, as people on YouTube probably know. And if yeah. not, you'll be aware of it before the end of the stream. No one, everyone goes, oh, Liam's a wanker, no one's a wanker. Yeah, maybe they are. I, yeah. It's always, it's almost like John and Paul, John Lennon, Paul McCartney, no yeah. Liam Gallagher. I've mm -hmm. always been Lennon. You've been mm -hmm. like Paul stroke George, you yeah. know, whereas with me, it's always been Noel Gallagher. You know, he's yeah. a songwriter, he's a left handed guitarist, but he plays it right handed. Mm -hmm. You know, and and he wrote all these songs. I mean, although there may be Dick, yeah, he's written some fucking tunes. Well, that's you know? it. I mean, I can't lie. I I like I'm Noel Gallagher all the way out the Gallagher Brothers. I I love Noel's solo career. The High Flying Bird stuff, in my opinion, is better than half the Oasis stuff. Which I don't know. Uh, I, did I show you this? Is seen as it's right here. Did, did I show you this as well? You might have seen this on the Oasis collection. Oh. Right, what's, what's that? That's the, oh, the, the moon. Yeah, that's the thing. And it's when I pre-ordered the album. Yeah. From his website, this came with mm -hmm. it with a first few hundred. It's oh, okay. it's not prop. It's it is a. Copy. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not actually his. Yeah. Um, but I just I saw I've got it framed. I saw, yeah. I, I actually had a picture of the wife in that, so I took it out and put that. Inside. <laughs> I won't comment on that, but um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I love his solo career and, you know, you hear him go on talk shows and stuff and then he says really stupid stuff. Like, do you remember when he come out and said something about Lewis Capaldi? And I'm not a big Lewis Capaldi fan, but he said that he come out and sounded like Chewbacca or something like that. And then yeah, and he Lewis came out with a Chewbacca t-shirt on, didn't he? Yeah, something like that. He bit back and he made Noel look like a bit of a twat to be honest and it's like oh man it's like because i love his music so much but it's like why do you keep putting yourself in these holes <laughs> i always remember noel's interview i was me and the missus were driving to v festival mm. um and obviously it's a long journey from darlton down to there and mm -hmm. chris moll's show was on because we saw it early in the morning and yeah. it was the day of the release of dig out your soul was it dig out your soul mm -hmm. yeah it must have been because then they were doing the tour after that was it and uh noel had been on the rasp night before yeah. And he then did an interview half pissed with Chris Moulds. And I always remember somebody messing and goes, what makes you laugh? No, what did he say? He said something. I can't, somebody said something, but he says, mm. the best thing I like seeing is a dog with his head out the window, driving the head out with his tongue. Yeah. And I was just like, and he, and he always used to say, and it was the other thing he goes, never trust a man whose surname is a Christian name. And that's yeah. always stuck with me. So I'll be like, oh, this this is um, Paul, I'd like you to meet oh, Mr. Johns. Oh, don't trust him. No, it's, it's all <laughs> things that stick in your mind. Yeah, you know, or, or the thing he says, he goes, um, was it? There's always that one phrase that all comes out with like, um, we're the biggest. Oh, is it? I can't remember the phrase. Something like we're not the biggest band in the world, but we believe we are, or something like that. Um, yeah, I can't remember the phrase because I had it on my um, Facebook uh, thing mm -hmm. on there. Uh, but yes, so yeah. that was. I'm with, with that dawdling on here. Uh, <laughs> anyway, Lee's here. So, are you Lee? All right. How are we doing? All right. Uh, obviously, a lot of love for Lee. Um, Lewis's favorite artist is Black Pink. And I'll be honest, never heard of it. No, no idea. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, Jules, you must discuss Take That. All right. So, James, Take That fan? Uh, not at all. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll be honest, I've never been a Take That fan. And when they split up, I always remember, didn't, who was it? I'm sure Take That stopped Oasis getting to number one because they did a cover of, yes, they did. Their cover of How Deep Is Your Love stopped the yeah, world getting to number it. one. I hate it. The Bee Gees version is so much better. <laughs> but that was their breakup song, if I remember. Yeah. And that got to number one and that stopped Oasis getting number one with Wonderwall because everybody thinks Wonderwall was a number one hit, but it never was. Dollar yeah. Bank and Anger was, but Wonder Woman it, never hit number one because of the uh, take that. It's quite amazing that Wonder Woman never hit number one, actually, thinking about it. It is one of those songs that you just assume because of you know how beloved it is <laughs> would have hit number one. Do you know? Mm. This is th th this is, I've just remembered this. Someone's gone in the back of my mind going, <sighs> but knowledge is just dust up. Do you know what Oasis's first number one was? I couldn't tell you. I couldn't. I'm not sure. Have a guess. Have a guess. Have a guess. Uh, money and cigarettes? Oh, no, wait. That was second. Money half. and cigarettes? Yeah. Cigarettes and alcohol, you mean? Oh, cigarettes and alcohol. Sorry. Um, money and cigarettes. That's a, that's a B-side. Yeah. 
I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not as good on Oasis. <laughs> Some might say. Mm. Oh, really? Yes. And do you know what Oasis single has never been on an album? Oh, um, no, go on, go on. Whatever. Really? I thought that was on the third album, but I, I'll okay. take your word for it. <laughs> whatever is obviously it's on the best of and all that, but whatever was released and it was never um, put on an album ever. Oh, fair enough. I was thinking I'm the Walrus because they they done a live version of that, didn't they? Yeah, um, I am the Walrus is on the B side of cigarettes and alcohol. Uh, Life from Glasgow Barrowland. So it's all coming back. Life from Glasgow Barrowlands in nineteen eighty four. They done that B sides album, didn't they? They did the master plan. That's it. That I love it when artists do that. To be fair, because I think B sides always sort of get uh, they go under the radar a bit with a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, I think that's the weird. best thing with Oasis as well. You notice that some of the B sides are be sometimes they're better than the album yeah. songs to put them out. Like Rockin' Chair is yeah. on there, and that is a tune. And then you've got like Round Our Way. The Master Plan, for example, is a fucking B side. Yeah, you know. Uh, I, I, Noel does that in his solo career still. I think some of the B sides to his singles are better than the talk the tonight. Single. You know. The fact that, yeah. that they broke up and he fucked off somewhere and he sat down and wrote Take Tonight, Talk Tonight mm. came back. Acquiesce, B-side to some might say. It's a better yeah. song than some might say. But yes, see, see I'm, I'm babbling on. See, I knew as soon as I talk, start talking about music, it start coming back and just... Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh do you like the Oasis? Yeah, I do, yeah, yeah. Um, what's this here? Jules is about music, so take that, don't count. That's a fair point, Lee, and they don't exist anymore. <laughs> do you have a favorite Beatle? My favorite was always John. Yeah, I'm I'm a Lennon fan, and this guy's uh, Mr. Harrison. Uh, yeah, I I I. It's weird. I I I'm sort of tied between Harrison and McCartney. I love them both. I think McCartney gets there because he's still alive, and he's actually he just went crazy with his solo career. He's got so much music, but I love Harrison. I love his personality, and I love all of his albums, all of them. I think for me, it's, I think so. It's been John Lennon. I don't know why. It's probably I it. honestly, I love them all. They're all like fantastic musicians, and you know, their personalities. I think that's one of the reasons why people like them because they're all such interesting people. Yeah, I think if John Lennon was alive now, he'd be. I don't think he'd be as much as an icon as you know. I no. think his death probably made him more of an icon than yeah. he probably would be, mm -hmm. but he would still be. You know, McCartney level, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I think it's a bit like the best, I wouldn't say the best thing has happened to him, but with regards to his uh, music getting out there and his image getting out there, him, him being assassinated. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, so John Lennon and McCartney and Harrison. I keep yeah, I, I, yeah, I couldn't choose between that. It's hard to choose between all four of them, to be honest. But <laughs> uh, Lewis has put take that or bad. So straight to the point there, Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> Matt's, ah, no, this is it. I mentioned this to you. Do you uh, remember? Yes, I do remember you mentioning it. Yeah, I still haven't seen it. <laughs> but honestly, I, it, I'm i going to give you, what time, what, it's the 22nd of December. I'm going to give you till Valentine's Day. And this is not an, inf when everybody's watching this, this is not a gay thing. I'm going to give you till Valentine's Day to get it, find it. And if not, I will... And on Lee's yeah. watching this, I will buy you a copy and yeah. I will send it to you. It's only on DVD because okay. I have got a copy, but you don't have a mine because it's mine, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you have to watch it because it is, to me, it's the best. Because somebody said just the other day, mm. there's never been a Beatles film. We've had Queen, we've kind of yeah. had Bowie, mm -hmm. and then we've had Elton John. Mm -hmm. But obviously, of all of those, we've never had, same with Michael Jackson, but we haven't had a Beatles film. No, it's it's a bit weird. Do you reckon they're scared to do it because obviously, like one of the big ones, McCartney is still alive. <laughs> but then they did Queen. But then again, that was more focused on Freddie, though, wasn't it? Yeah, I don't know because I've seen the one that you've got. I think I think that's what was behind you, Nowhere Boy. But that's like John before before they get famous, isn't it? It's when they're in the quarry yes. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I only picked that up again. On the back of Get Back. This is why it makes me skip when stuff comes out. I'm like, oh, I'm going to buy it. Which is why I'm lucky when like movies come out to go back to yeah. movies. I don't want to go back to movies all the time. Is I'm lucky enough that I've got the stuff. So if somebody goes, yeah. Spider Man, I've got the back, you know, Marvel, I've got the back, you know, that's, Die Hard, whatever. I've yeah. got all of them so I don't have to that's jump why, out. And... That's why I'm quite lucky with the, with the Beatles. I, I, I do more or less own everything. Because it's funny, I did go looking for things to buy. <laughs> and the only thing I could find was like all the new 50th anniversary stuff they've done for Let, Let It Be. 
And it's like, other than that, it's like, well, I've got it. <laughs> exactly. I need to... I can't find anthology number three, which I don't know. It must be in the loft somewhere. Um, I need to find that. Yeah. Because it's got I'm... all the early stuff on it as well. Like all the... Yeah. Oh, it's not even there. But it's got like the... Um, that'll be the day the stuff on it, mm-hmm. hasn't it? From when they yeah. did the recording and John's thing. But um, yeah. I am touch wood going mm-hmm. to Liverpool next next year and going to go and oh. see Rob. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to ask him to do me Beatles tour. Yeah. Uh, show me around. I want to go to John Lennon's house. I want to go on to... Yeah. Um, uh, what's it? Oh, Men, is it Mendips? Mendips. Is that the name of his house? Where you oh, lived with his aunt? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We we done. I've done that. We went. We booked it when I went to Liverpool. We booked a cab, and they take you around privately to all of the. We went to all the houses, Strawberry Fields, Penny Lane, the barber shop, Cavern Club, all that stuff. The school where they met. You can actually go in the hall and stuff where John and Paul met. It's, okay really okay really cool really cool because <laughs> because the uh house which is on the co- let's see this is me mm. <laughs> back <of> here <laughs> just coming off the single for a witness is live forever has a picture of a house in the front all right is and that's that john lennon's house oh, okay well that's interesting it's, it's, and also obviously you know the cover for don't look back in anger is all the roses around the drums because yeah mm-hmm. that's when ringo left and they put the roses when he comes so that's to do with yeah. that Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, so yeah, I just just were on the topic of that. I'm hoping yeah. to go and do that. I remember going to see um, my friend and I again before I had children was married. Mm-hmm. We uh, we went to see. We got tickets to go and see the Cooks. No, not the Cooks. Yes, the Cooks mm-hmm. uh, at Liverpool Barfly, and we went there. We drove down there, mm-hmm. um, and we I never had a walk around. I've never been to Liverpool before, so we went and had a walk around, and I found the Cavern. It was the Cavern Pub. I mean, it was at the Cavern Pub. I went, oh, yeah. look, so that's the Cavern Club. So obviously we went down and he went, because he looked at me and he went, you want to go and have a drink down in the Cavern Club, don't you? I went, yes, I do. So he went <laughs> all the way down there, sat there. I was just like, having me John Smith at the time. I was just like, oh, my mm. God. And he went, you are the most happiest person ever. I'm like, yes, I am. I, you know? I, I, I was obviously underage when I went in the Cavern Club. So um, I had to get, I figured I went in there with my grandparents because they took me. They bought me a bottle of beer and we went up top and I had it up top. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just I just remember being there. I mean, that was a great gig because we went to see the cooks at the Barfly. Mm-hmm. It was part of MTV Pre- Presents or something, so we went. And I think it was a band called The View. Who supported you? Mm-hmm. Remember The View? I do vaguely remember them, yeah. They had a song called I've Had the Same Jeans On for Four mm-hmm. Days Now, blah, blah. They did, yeah. That was one. And then there was another band. And then before the cooks came on, me and me went, because it was just a small venue, we went round the corner to mm-hmm. get a drink. And because uh, Zane Law was the presenter of MTV at the time, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he was there. So my mate was talking to him. And I looked to my right, and it was Andy, who used to be the bassist out at the Monkeys, who left after the first oh, album. Okay. So he mm-hmm. was there. And I, so my mate was chatting to Zane, and I was chatting to Andy from Arctic Monkeys. And then yeah. and then we came and got right the front for the. I was just like, this is just a surreal experience. Yeah. Going to yeah. the Cavern Club, and then meeting Zane, Zane Law, and then meeting Andy from um, ex Arctic Monkeys. And then. Yeah. Because I was chatting to Andy about Milburn. Have you heard about a band called Milburn? No, I don't. I'm not familiar with them. No. They came out more. They knew they were around the same time as Art and the Monkeys, but Art and the Monkeys mm-hmm. hit it. And Milburn didn't. They're both from Sheffield. Yeah. They got a oh, first album called yeah. Well, Well, Well. Mm-hmm. You can have a listen if you want. It's on. It's on mm-hmm. Spotify or whatever. Um, and I was talking to him about them. I'm like, Do you like to Milburn? I'm really into Milburn. Oh yeah. yeah. And then and I was just like, this is just so surreal. I've met them. Talked about not Art and Monkeys. Talked about another band to a guy who was in the Art and Monkeys. And yeah. Was saying. I like the Twilight Singers. Why don't you play them on Radio One? And he's like, "Well, you know, mate, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. That was a really bad accent." And then, but yes, so that was so. Yes, so next year, hopefully, Touchwood, I'm going to go down, um, yeah. stay with Rob. Um, I mean, obviously, hopefully, meet um, Jordan, Movie Worm, yeah. mm-hmm. or, or was that Movie Wham? Um, <laughs> and then um, have that tour. Yeah, well, fair enough. If, if you've got a spare seat, I'll definitely come down. Those. Well, what do we could do if you wanted to? If we if we arrange it. We could get mm. a hotel room and you and I could obviously go in the hotel and we could meet yeah. John and Rob and then we could do a tour there, I guess. Something to do. Honestly, I'd be going for it. I've been meaning to go back to Liverpool because obviously like the first, when I went there before, I must have been 14 and you know, I couldn't drink in the cabin club and stuff. I was sort of grounded by what other people wanted to do, who I went with. So it'd be nice just to go down and just have a do all the Beatles stuff with, you know. Like, it's been so long since I've been there. I can't remember some of the stuff. Because there's a yeah, museum exactly. there as well that I went in. 
and I can't remember half of that stuff anymore. <laughs> right, which will do it. I would say it's a date, but what I'm going to date and too, it's definitely not a date. But we'll, we're going we're gonna to organise that, and we can practice our best Scouse accents, and we'll yeah, go down there. We can probably fit in. All right, La. All right, La. Yeah. How's it going? Great, Tag. Great, great, one great. Of those things. I'll talk into it. My phone will do it for me. <laughs> Just to go, Jürgen Klopp. Jürgen Klopp. Love Jürgen Klopp. You like Jürgen Klopp? Yeah. Can I get yeah? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just rubbish. Uh, uh, right, anyway. Uh, on with the show. Mm. Um, uh, legally, legally, don't be jealous. Uh, Backbeat is obviously one of my favourite... It is, I'll, it is I'll, I, I'll take your words for it. <laughs> this is obviously from before, because unfortunately we can still see it, okay. Uh, favorite music choices are Ben Falls, mm-hmm. R.E.M., ELO, and film scores. I remember Ben Falls 5. Is that different? Is that his band? I'm not sure. I mean, I, I'm not too familiar. I, I, I love R.E.M. and ELO, though. Love those two. They're definitely two of my favorite bands right there. So this is the bit I thought. I'll be honest. I'm going to disagree with that a second. That we would because we haven't done this before. Mm-hmm. I thought this would be a five minute stream, yeah. and that would be it. <laughs> yeah. But I haven't. There's still things in my head. I'm thinking. Ooh. Yeah. It. You know. It, it. I think what's interesting for me is I. I just remember getting into all these bands through like my dad and stuff. I remember going to Car Boots, and it's funny seeing like REM and ELO come up. I remember like going through record bins with my dad at car boots and he'd pull out like a new world record by yellow and that's how i got into them and in rem i think it was out of time which is still my favorite album from them pulled that out I was like oh I, I know this song i knew like the shiny happy people song I was like i know this one and then my dad was like it's a good album so i was like right buy that took it home fell in love with rem it's just really interesting going over all these bands yeah i mean quickly going to this yeah Lee's put your legs, Queen, Tangerine Dream, Depeche Mode. Yeah. I do like Rich Against, especially the first album. But I mm. also do like, um, uh, I've forgotten the name of the second album. <laughs> Is it? Oh, I, I like, so I wouldn't say I'm a big fan of Rich Against the Machine, but yeah, yeah. some of the songs in there I do like um, mm-hmm. because the riffs, um, I've forgotten the guitarist's name, Tom something, I forgot his name. Mm. He does is just extraordinary. They are so, yeah. so good. Um, but going back, because what you touched on it there mm-hmm. is, how we got into our musical genres. I remember when I was at school, my mum used to pick me up and we would drive home, obviously, uh, and my mum would, wouldn't have the radio on, she'd be listening to music with her mm-hmm. 90s, I've got a CD thing in the back of the car that we put multiple mm-hmm. CDs in and you can take the thing off, plug it in, and it plays mm-hmm. your different CDs track. Yeah. I remember it was Simply Red and Stars album, which even to this day, I would hold my hand up and sing, that is a great album. I love that album. That is a very good album. And then it was Wet, Wet, Wet. My mum absolutely adores Marty Pello, so we used yeah. to listen to Wet, Wet, Wet. Um, I remember going to see Hold Back the River with her on the, t- the tour of the Hold Back the River. Oh, you know, right. Sweet Little yeah. Mystery and all that. Um, and obviously Jimmy Neal, obviously. It had to be Jimmy Neal, what? Well, you know, you, you, you know yeah. along, with, along, along with the Biker Grove soundtrack, you've obviously got to, like, you've got to you know, you have yeah. to do Jimmy Neal. Um, and then... I think that was it. And then I kind of went into randomly two and limited when they came out mm-hmm. with like, are you ready for this? And the yeah. twilight zone. And then I kind of grew out of that. and went, well, that's shit. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of got into guns and roses very much lose your illusion one and two, but more so yeah. two and then appetite for destruction. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of got yeah. into Bon Jovi a bit when they did the keep the faith album. Cause I really love keep the yeah. faith. See Bon Jovi, like my mum, obsessed with bon jovi so i've sort of grown up listening to him a lot as well or them and also he obviously did the uh blaze of glory song for young guns too and i love that song yeah i was like Mm -hmm. and then i remember going to my friends who lived around the corner and we used to play a premier manager on his computer and all that Mm -hmm. and he used to have cassettes and played them and he played me supergrass i show coco the debut album and i love supergrass debut album Mm -hmm. You, you like you heard that one I haven't heard that one. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but that, honestly, no one ever like. I had that on tape. I flew to Canada. Well, I didn't, mm-hmm. obviously didn't walk. Uh, my because my family live over there, and I gave and I put it on my my cousin's car. He mm-hmm. then wanted that. I had to leave it with him, and he plays it over and over again. Mm. Yeah, honestly, super grass. I show Coco. Up. It's got the one all right. If you all right's too radio friendly, get that out of the way. Yeah. But there's so so many good songs in the super grass mm-hmm. album. Okay. And then the yeah. Oasis definitely maybe. And I think I remember I got into Oasis and then Blur around about the same time, mm-hmm. but it was more Oasis. And I think it was when the Cigarettes and Alcohol single came out, 
and mm-hmm. had Eye on the Wall versus the B side. Yeah. And my dad came in and went with the um, the blue album on tape and went, Yeah. Here's the original. Mm-hmm. And then from that, I then got into the Beatles. And I think yeah. that's how it started. If it wasn't for Oasis, I wouldn't have been in the Beatles. Well, um, it, it, it's really funny, actually, because the blue album's the one that my dad gave me that. And that's how I got into them as well. Because I, I prefer the red album, but the blue album is one that got me into it. Oh, see, I, I'm, a, I'm more of a fan of the later career the Beatles anyway so I think I gravitate towards the blue one more but yeah because I, I, the first band I ever really got into was Madness like I, I just ran back like it was just so different to anything I heard and my dad always used to play it when I was younger and then he gave me like he got me the blue album for Christmas and then after that he got me like the Kinks greatest hits Led Zeppelin's hits um and just a few other bands like that the Who Stones um but yeah from that from there on my collections for obviously I went mad on the Beatles but then like all these other bands I listened to the hits and the hits was never enough for me I love albums I have to hear them all so I then get all of the Kinks albums all of the Who's albums and they weren't all great but I I, I just think it's fascinating listening to them yeah I totally get it it's weird how it's, it's almost like human evolution how you started off as a monkey and then we're here now yeah. I mean, I started off with Two Unlimited, Jimmy mm-hmm. Neal, and Wet, Wet, Wet. Mm-hmm. And then I would come out of it with like Beatles, John Lennon solo career, uh, Oasis, and even Ed Sheeran. I really like it. I know, I'll be honest, I hold my hand up and went, mm-hmm. fucking shit. But then my mate was like, no, listen to it. And I listened to his second album, and then his third album, and then his. And, and I really like it, you know. And then I went, obviously, went to see him. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes. You're right. You've got to listen to a whole album because I'm judging Ed Sheeran on what he does. But then I realised that what he did on an album, mm-hmm. as in like puts the guitar, up, puts it on the loop, then does the bass, yeah. then does the, and he does all that, and he even does that live. And I was just like, okay, I've got a bit of respect for you, you know, yeah. with regards to doing that. Yeah, I, I, I think it's interesting. There are some new artists who are quite good like that because I, I, we have briefly spoke about him, and I don't think you're a fan, but like Harry Styles as a solo artist. He's he's actually proven me wrong. So I, I I was not a One Direction fan. I did not have any respect for them. They were a group that were put together. They were a product. People were writing their songs. People were producing their songs. They just went in done a couple of vocals. But you know, I I can say that yeah, the other four probably still doing that. But as far as I'm aware, Harry's come away and he's actually got some creative talent in his music. I think in his solo stuff. Yeah, you're right. We did discuss this, and you're right. I'm not yeah. a big fan of Harry Styles. It's but no, no, you know, but the thing is, though, I respect the fact that you've come out and went, I like Harry Styles, but I don't like what he did. No, like you... he's come out and, he, and he's reimagined himself. He, he's, yeah. you know, he's in Dunkirk, he's in Eternals, you know, yeah. he's, he's getting more film roles, which is fair enough. I think so, he's proven that. So he's what, a... what, going to X Factor mm. to get where he is, mm. was it X Factor? Mm. Or was it one of them? One of them. <laughs> one to of get them. where he is, he's obviously done a lot of work in the background to yeah. do it. So I, fair play. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll say this: I don't know anything about the other four. I could be wrong, but I imagine that they are your generic modern-day products of the music industry. But mm. I think he actually does have some, you know, creative talent behind him with his music, and he's, you know, he's the films I've seen him in. He's been a really good actor as well. So I think, you know, I've got a lot of uh, respect. For just him. needs a fucking haircut. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> I want to. You know, it's that. funny enough, like because obviously, look at the Beatles stuff and all the long hair yeah. and all that. And, you, and you... Mm. but that was the sixties and the seventies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you look at Paul McCartney now, and you go, "That's responsible." You look at Ringo Starr now, and you yeah. go, "That's responsible." Mm-hmm. Look at Harry Styles, and you go, like, "Fucking haircut." Yeah. Right. Take the women's trousers off, put a proper <laughs> fucking shirt on, and cut your hair, son. Yeah. And carry on, carry on with your career after that. They're trying to create an image, and I think all every image has been done now. So now they're like, right, we'll take the trousers off that, and we'll do the shirt from that image. We'll have that haircut, and it's just all. It's like when you but you got a load of le- Lego bits, and they're putting together different characters, making their own character. <laughs> yeah, it's like a game I used to play with with, with my grand used to play with me, and I used to play with mm-hmm. when I played with my daughter as well. You you fold a bit of paper into three pits. I draw the head, hide it. They draw the yeah. body, hide it, and so I draw the legs. Ta da! Harry Styles. That's what he's wearing today. <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, yeah, I think there's a few modern artists about that are, are like that. It's like that Billie Eilish as well. Going back to her, yes. not really my thing, but there's talent there. It's it's different. It's creative. I think so. Yeah, you're right. There's some things which will come out, 
now, and I'll be like, I don't mind that actually. But I very much, I tell you, what, actually, I'm just going to quickly go through the comments before I babble on. Mm -hmm. um, right, we'll go to Adam Six. What are your top favorite band solo artists? James, go now. Um, oh, um, Beatles, Bowie, anything Eric Clapton's been in, and that includes his bands. Keen, I know that's a bit of a weird one. Um, oh, Electric Light Orchestra. Okay. I think um, probably missed a big one there, but that was that was quick. <laughs> I would probably say obviously Oasis, mm -hmm. of course. Um, mm -hmm. Now, with regard to Oasis, I include No Gallas High Flying Birds in there as well as Liam's solo project. That's classed to me as a bubble. Okay. Um, I would probably say um, Linkin Park. Mm -hmm. um, up until the fourth or fifth album. Uh, obviously, you no know, Chester died, but um, I really like Linkin Park. Um, who else is that? I really like Christ, put me on the spot as well now. Um, I think I'm, local, I'm just saying. <laughs> I know. I was like, go, James. And I'm like, now it's my turn. I'm like, I'm yeah. just going to take my time here. Um, I did like Coldplay for the first couple of albums, but they've, they've gone yeah. downhill a bit. They've gone to. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say because like I've bought I've got, I've bought all their albums as well. I've got their brand new album on vinyl down there. I, a good word to describe Coldplay nowadays is sellouts. I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to love the first album. Yeah, the first um, the second one as well. Rough yeah. Um, oh, Star Sailor. I really like Star Sailor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Spe their first album is absolutely unbelievable. I'm not familiar with them really. I, I know a couple of their songs, but you know, did alcoholic. Uh, yeah. Poor misguided fool. I just love um plus the guy I chat with sometimes on, on Twitter. <laughs> I randomly messaged him one day and we had this conversation. I was like, that doesn't normally happen when somebody's in a band. <laughs> What's going on? Um like Milburn, Ed Sheeran, but I don't know, favourite one. Richard I love Richard Ashcroft. He has to mm -hmm. be in there. I yeah. absolutely adore. I'm not a big fan of the verb, but his solo albums mm -hmm. is, I he, 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 checked out his solo stuff. Oh, I think the second album is it, or is the first album? I can't remember. It's one. It's one. Got, there's a song called "Check the Meaning." I love that. But there's also a song on his. He released one called "RSA" as opposed to Richard Ashcroft, and there's a song on there called um, "She Brings Me the Music," and I had that as my first dance. It was oh, funny. It, yeah. mm -hmm. it was the year we were getting married. It was leading up to the wedding a couple of weeks or months beforehand, and I just put the new album in the CD player at the time, drive to work, and it came on, and I was like. My God! And I came home and I played the wife. Well, played Annie at the time, and I was just like, yeah. "She's like, you want that as, as our first dance?" So yeah, I went, "Yes, I do." <laughs> so that, so, so that, so Richard Ashcroft or RSA, uh, mm. she brings me the music. Is uh, yes, yeah, so there you go. That'll, 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 that'll do for me. I'm going to run out of um, other stuff. There's just, but so many. Yeah. Uh, years ago, I had a piano. My piano tuner used to be in uh, a band and support the Beatles. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. The two have fruitfully shared cigarettes with John Lennon. He was apparently very funny and friendly. Interesting yeah. story. I think and I do like, believe as, I was say, like as time's gone on, I feel like some people like to give Lennon a bit of a bad rap. Like I don't really get it because, and I think that's a good thing about this Get Back documentary. I was expecting Lennon to be miserable, to be honest, because um, I know that this was right. You know, it was you know we're not far off the period where John decided he wanted out of the band, but he was yeah. you know cracking so many jokes. He seemed like he was having a great time. So, you know, I really love a uh, friendly fella. He just wasn't on time. No, that's it. He was never on time. It was quite funny because I was watching my... I'd already watched it. I come downstairs, I catch my dad watching Get Back and it'd be like early in the morning. The other three beat was there. I'm like, Lennon, they'll get there till lunch. And my dad would go, yeah, I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's funny as well. I had a diet of tea and toast. It was like so British. Yeah. <laughs> you, it was, you got yeah. your toast, yeah. That was it. The bit that cracked me up was when, like, they get to the afternoon bits of the sessions, and they'd all be some of them be drinking wine. I'm like, yeah. Can I have? Can I have? And well, then George is like, I'll have some ale, please. Yeah. Not beer, ale. <laughs> uh, and uh, there was a bit where you could tell Paul had like a joint, and I thought it was quite funny because he's smoking it, and he's they're talking. At first, he's just giving his one word on it. So he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, his eyes are looking really baggy, and then it cut. And, and they had that and, little bit on the end of the guitar where they put the tabs. Yeah, I've so that's quite funny actually. <laughs> but I just remember when it cut to Paul when he finished his joint, he was just on the back of his chair, like, 
<laughs> that's, that's quite funny. <laughs> it, 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 it was oh, it's so good. Um, Jimmy put his short photo shoulder photo to prove it. Awesome. Uh, movie bug. You can call him James if you want, Jules. Uh, <laughs> but it's an outstanding film. You'll love it. Um, yeah. Ben Folds 5 was his band when he went solo. We'll answer that question. And then we've got uh, a random one. Yeah. Uh, and there's no more. That's it. That's all of the comments. <laughs> so, so there you go. So that's not too bad, I suppose. We've got we've got we've done like an hour. I'm I happy mean, with. I mean, it, yeah, it's it's good to just go back and talk about a lot of these old bands, to be honest. Because obviously, like I was saying earlier, like I had my old YouTube channel where I used to talk about movies. I was constantly putting out records from like Fleetwood Mac to Genesis, Zeppelin, all that stuff, and I haven't spoken about these bands properly in years so it's just it's just nice to go back and talk about things like the beatles and stuff i think exactly i mean the thing is as well i, I mean if we're looking at it now we've only got three people mm. watching and i don't really care i just like the fact that i can sit down with you and we've got similar yeah. music tastes mm -hmm. we haven't really we've just touched the surface we could go really into yeah stuff and the set stuff and we can probably save that for another time i'm thinking definitely yeah and then and then maybe do another stream i don't know yeah. see how people are feeling on this i mean i know it hasn't got but we are a movie channel and this is just yeah. something I just thought I want to do something different. The, yeah. We had a chat before we obviously mm -hmm. got this all together and you were interested. And, and, and I think it's great that we can both, regardless of the comments, you mm. and I can have, have this conversation. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I feel like music is just as interesting as movies to talk about um, really, especially like, like with us where we're lucky enough to have uh, a lot of history and knowledge with music, I think. It's... Yeah, and it's all genetic, isn't it? It's all down to our parents. You know, yeah. my mum could have been a fucking raver in the seventies, eighties, and I could be listening to a different thing. My dad said, "My dad loves Led Zeppelin," and I. But the thing is, I've never been. I never got into Led Zeppelin. Mm -hmm. I, obviously, I do like um, the song. I forgot the name of it now. Oh, the one of Thor. Stay away. Oh, um, immigrant song. Immigrant song. That's it. Yeah, I look. I mean, I'll, I'll be. I always remember. It's in Thor, and I was like, oh, yeah, I was in School of Rock, and I was just like, and I'd, I'd be driving home from work, and I'd go, right, I'd put, and I'm like, -na 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 -na. I'm like, right, I'm on the way home now, this is home time, I've yeah. got Immigrant Song on, I know. I can't lie, I think I play, it's just called Led Zeppelin, but it's their fourth album, I think I play that album at least once every two months, I love that record. <laughs> I need to get, I need to get, I'm trying, I'll be honest, of late, I'm trying to really get into the doors, and I just, yeah, doors are good. I just can't, seem no. to just latch onto it yeah i don't mind the doors um i don't know i mean because I, I i've never actually got into the doors albums actually because i'm a very album person but that's one band where i've never really picked up their albums i've just got a few compilations but i do enjoy them i got some good music oh jake's arrived Is oh, all right jake yes we're doing something different tonight jake thanks for popping on um so what i'm going to do mm -hmm. because I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the age card here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm gonna set you some homework. Okay. So then, if we do, I mean, we could discuss this later. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. if we do come to do another stream, yeah, I'd like you to tell me. I'm gonna give you two albums to listen to. Hang on, I'm gonna write them down so I don't. I mean, I could just watch the stream back, but I'll write them down. While <laughs> this is true. You could, or, or I could <laughs> just message you after the stream. To yeah. be fair, but yes, yeah. Um, I'll, write, I'll put my notes up. I'll write them down while I'm here. And then, uh, then, uh, then, what we'll do after you've done that and you listen to the albums, you yeah. then give me two albums to listen to, okay. and then when we come back to do another stream, we can discuss it and then we can see whether we our individual tastes. All right. So, would you want two of... albums now or when? When no, I no, you listen to your two first. I listen to my two. Okay, yeah, and then then we'll come back and it's That's depending. Right. And then once we'll do that, or actually yeah. in the next couple of weeks over Christmas and New Year, you go yeah. right, Paul. Just mess with me, not on here or yeah. not obviously yeah. don't live. I'll, just go, I'll I've listened to the two, and then yeah. give me two, and I can listen to them. Right, I'll, t I'll listen to these before Christmas, and I'll give you a couple be before Christmas. <laughs> okay, so album number one, mm -hmm. the artist. The I don't know if it, I don't, now I don't know if it's on Spotify because I haven't checked. That's the right. artist is, is called Matthew J. J A Y, okay, and the album's called Draw D R A W. Okay, got it. Now, I've never heard of it? He, <laughs> he uh, he's he's he supported Star Seal. I want to want to see them, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and then he unfortunately fell out of a window in Nottingham and died. So he's no longer with us. Yeah, okay. Um, but he only did one album. He did a second album, which is kind of like a John Lennon 
thing put together to mm-hmm. release to get something. Um, okay. Mm-hmm. And the second album is I want you to listen to Star Sailors first album. Star Sailors. Okay. I think. Oh, I forgot the name of the fucking album. Um, is it called This Is Love? No. Fuck. Well, I don't know the name of the first album. Can't be that good then. <laughs> it's got. Look, it's an orange title. Oh, hang on. Orange. If I write orange title down, I find the album cover. I'll, I'll probably know which one it is. Star Sailor debut album. Except I can't type. Hang on. Oh, what's it? I can see it in my head now. I've just put debut album. Lo- Love is here. Love is here. Love is here. Yes. Here. Because it's one of the um, songs is Can You Feel It? No, no, it's not called that. Is it? Hang on. Um, I mean, I'll put down it's the debut album, so I'm sure I'll be able to find it. No, it is called Love is Here. No, no, I'm, I'm, I am right. Okay. Yeah, so those two. So, so between, listen to those between now and Christmas, and then drop me a message off, off live, and give me two, mm-hmm. and I'll listen to them. Not Harry's fucking styles, though. Just... Word of warning. No, I'm, I'm trying to think of what I can recommend to you. I, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I won't recommend them now. Have you? Uh, just curious though. Have you heard um Harrison's first solo album? Harrison. Think, yeah, George Harrison's first album. Oh, George Harrison. I, I thought you meant like it's a band called Harrison. Oh, yeah. like, oh, <laughs> Have you heard his first album? No. Oh well, that would probably be one of them then, as a as a spoiler. Um, what was that one called? All things must pass. I won't recommend any other Beatles stuff, but I just feel like that's that's the best solo material that they any of them done, in my opinion. Is My Sweet Lord on that one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It was Yeah, it was like a free LP set when it came out. It's, it, it oh, was, God, you can tell. he was. I'm just looking at the tracks. It's yeah. almost like he's gone, what about the Beatles? These yeah. are all the songs they wouldn't let me do. Well, I'm going to put them on here. It's funny because he says it in the Get Back documentary. Because when I was watching it with my dad, I said, "Oh, this is what becomes all things must pass." He's because he's sat. I, I can't remember who he's talking to. Just one of the engineers, I think, and he's just going, "I've got so many songs ready to go." <laughs> no, no, no. I'll tell you what, I'm actually gonna. I'll when I've got. I will listen. Oh, that's. I will listen to that one because I think it's probably one of the ones I should be listening to. To be fair, it's my favorite solo Beatle album, and it's. I'd rather put that on in a couple Beatle albums, even. That's how much I love that record. It's genuinely one of my favourite albums ever. Okay, I'll give that a listen. I've got one final question, then we're going to end it, because I think it's a nice time to end it. Um, do any of you like The White Stripes? Yeah, I don't mind. I've got one of their albums. I've got the one with um, Seven Nation. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, dun. Very predictable. Dun. I, I, I looked into getting some of their other albums when I was into them. But I just never got round to getting the others. What was that song they did? Which was, I, it sounds stupid saying what was it because but there was a song when you're gonna ring, is it gonna ring my bell? No. Mm. When done. you're gonna ring it? When you're gonna ring it? I can't remember. I was just like, <laughs> I, can't fuck I can't remember that one. <laughs> Jesus. Which quickly before we end it, I remember going to see the Seahorses live mm-hmm. at Newcastle, and there was a ba- I've forgotten the name of the band, but they had a song which went. Get on the bus, get on the bus, get on the bus, get on the bus, get on. The... That was it. That was it. That was... it's almost like the Britain got. We need it. We need a chorus here. Yeah. yeah. How about we get on the bus? <laughs> well, what's after that? Yeah. We get on the bus. Uh huh. What about we get on the bus? <laughs> what we're going to call the song? Get on the bus. Oh, gee. and that—that that was the song, and I was just like, yeah. What's the, what's, best, what's the guy? Songs? What's the guy called from the Sex Pistols? He done like that. that he went up by that name, Public Image Limited. He had a few songs like that. Right? Johnny just, Rotten. Yeah, I see. He had a few songs. I can't remember them off the top of my head. I've got like four of his albums in my wall of records, which come from my dad because my dad loved him. But I remember my dad playing him a lot when I was younger. He had a few songs like that where it's just he'd just repeat the same chorus over and over and over. <laughs> I do it all the time. Sometimes someone on the radio and he's like, oh, listen along. I'm like, What's this song called? Scores. You don't find well what it's called, Paul, yeah. because it's been repeated throughout the chorus. And like, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. So anyway, tell you what, Jim, we'll end it there. Mm-hmm. But this has been an experience. Um, yeah, you know, it's, it's not about the viewing figures. I think it's about the conversation. I think we've had yeah. a good conversation, to be honest. Honestly, I've had a blast. It's you know, it, as I say, like I do miss my old channel from time to time because I love talking about music as well. So it's actually been it's been great to come come on. And- it was so good when I messaged you and you went 100 percent. I was just like, oh, so that's yeah. so yes then. <laughs> oh, OK, <Yeah. laughs> that's interesting. Um, OK, cool. 
So yeah, yeah. so we'll do. We'll we'll let the dust settle as such, mm -hmm. and then what we'll do is I'll just do this. Is uh, we'll, we can have a chat. Yeah. Um, and we can see if we can organise something behind. Do something another time. What do you reckon? Yeah, no, I'm game on my channel, your channel. I don't mind. I'm I'm hundred percent there. <laughs> well, to be fair, we could swap it over, couldn't we? I mean, yeah. we could do it on your channel. We'll do it on my channel. We'll see what happens. Do a series. We should come up with a name for it. Uh, I've already got one. Oh yeah, that's true. Mag yeah. Magpies and bugs. Uh, yeah. Musicals, I'm gonna, whatever. Do I'm gonna, I'm gonna just have to nick it though and put it on if we do it on my channel. Do it on my channel as well. Like, yeah, bugs nice. and magpies yeah. instead of magpies yeah, and bugs. Yeah, that's good. I like that. Swap instead it. of like Max and Paddy, Paddy and Max, or. I like that. Dec yeah. Decanant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that one does sounds good. <laughs> this is true. Okay. Right, 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 we'll wrap it up there. Thank you very much to everybody who, who did watch. I appreciate it. If you didn't you watch and catch up, thank you very much. Hopefully we'll get some feedback and then come back. Because obviously I am kind of missing my Sunday streams, but I don't have mm -hmm. the mojo, I guess, to go mm -hmm. back to do my Sunday streams. As you appreciate when I'm guessing you do your live streams, you've got to do it and you're like, oh. Yeah. And, but then you you get into it and you get back into it, I guess. Yeah, I think I think with those kind of ones, it's good. Like, I'm planning to do it monthly, weekly. After 30 weeks, it, it wears you down a bit. <laughs> and it's also, I think, um, gets a bit stale because it's the same questions over and over Absolutely. again. Yeah. Which before one is I went on, before, I'm going to say before I went on here, you can mm -hmm. go through and like get rid of keywords. And I got yeah. out the keywords, cheese. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Was, so that yeah. came up, I'm just like, you know, having it. So. Yeah, no, that's fair. I know that there was a couple of people that had a weird obsession with that. Um. <laughs> exactly. But uh, yes, yeah, so, right, so we'll leave it there. Thank you very much again to everybody watching. Thank you to Mr. Lack for joining me this evening. It's been an absolute pleasure. I love talking music as well, films. Um, and I'm going to end the broadcast and end the live stream. And you never know. We may come back for more. We may realize that this was a fucking waste of time. But what the hell? We've done it anyway. So who cares? Yeah. So that's it. I'm gonna end the broadcast. So thank you very much everybody for watching and we'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to sub to his channel or my channel, his channel. <laughs>